The Y6 have officially been unmasked and we're going to show you what they look like. And I'm going to tell you guys why I absolutely love this faction. It's coming up right here on more Ango. All right, so maybe you guys missed it, but on WWE Raw, we saw something really exciting. The Creed Brothers, now with Chad Gable, go up against Akira Tozawa and of course, Otis. And then, of course, we had to have the Wyatt Six. Now, if you guys missed WWE Raw, I highly encourage that you guys check out the full segment. But this is what you missed. Joe Gacy, Eric Rowan, and De Dexter Loomis have officially unmasked themselves. Love it. This is the right decision. I think a lot of people are going to talk about the Wyatt Six. And I think a lot of people have been curious as to whether or not these guys were just going to be wrestling in masks the entire time. I'm going to assume that's not necessarily the case, which I think is the right idea. And more specifically, I think the best thing they should have done was what they did tonight, which is actually unmask themselves, showcase who they are, and acknowledge that these are actually real human beings that aren't hiding behind a costume. Uh, more specifically, I felt very proud watching Gacy, Loomis, and Rowan actually get physical as well. I like the way that they had Nikki Cross jump off the turnbuckle and attack Chad Gable. Obviously, this allowed the three, uh, the trio, to go and attack Brutus and Julius Creed. And I think what was really cool about that specifically was the fact that Chad Gable was eventually able to run away from the ring. And then as he went up the ramp, there was Uncle Howdy doing his mysterious and funny walk. But let's talk a little bit about the guy's looks because, uh, yeah. Like, they're not trying to hide that it's Joe Gacy. They're not trying to hide Eric Rowan, and they're sure as hell not trying to hide that it's Dexter Loomis. I think the most puzzling part about this, though, is that uh, Dexter Loomis and Joe Gacy are the ones standing side-by-side side Rowan, which, in the absence of Uncle Howdy, that tells me Eric Rowan is second in command, which I think is the right idea, right? He is the one who obviously, aside from Uncle Howdy being the real-life brother of Bray, Eric Rowan was essentially the brother of Brody Lee and Bray Wyatt. So him being second in command makes a lot of sense. I also like the idea of Loomis and Joe Gacy being part of the tag team division. This is something I've said several times in the past, but when I see them stand side by side, I thought it was really cool. I also like the fact that Dexter Loomis is rocking these dreads because we all knew it was Dexter Loomis. He's got the same tattoos and everything like that, but I thought it was really dope that he had these dreads because if you look at it from the perspective of like an overall character he's got the the face paint he's got the makeup he's got the dreads it doesn't seem like he's much further away from his actual mask itself right now obviously we don't know how it's going to look like when they wrestle tag teams but i'm assuming the look that we saw tonight is the look that you will see in the ring um one of the biggest complaints in the past too was like with the Bludgeon Brothers or with Bray Wyatt or something like that, maybe the costume was a little too much to wrestle in. Um, I feel like their gear tonight kind of pretty much resembles how they're going to be wrestling moving forward, which doesn't seem to be chaotic in any way. So I think that's like a really good thing when you're looking at it from a perspective of like, you know, obviously they're dressed up. Yes, they have a little bit of makeup, but for the most part, there's a very human side to this. So for those who were kind of curious or maybe even concerned that this was going to be a supernatural group, I think WWE answered it on tonight's episode of Raw that that's not really the case. I think this is more similar to the Wyatt family, more similar to a cult following than it is to some supernatural super villain character arc. So I like that as well. The reveal did a couple things for me, though. Um, obviously, I mentioned all the stuff about them having the human side. I mentioned that they're not hiding the fact that it's Joe Gacy, Dexter Loomis, and Eric Rowan. But the other thing that they really did for me tonight that made me appreciate this was the fact that they did, in fact, get physical. And I think the, the big reason for that is because it was starting to become redundant, constantly showing up, you know, constantly showing up. And that was it. Obviously, last week we saw Uncle Howdy have the, the Sister Abigail moment, which was really good. This week we got these three going after the Creeds and Chad Gable. And I also like the fact that Nikki Cross was the one who jumped off the turnbuckle and attacked Chad Gable. Because, well, one, you don't really see too much intergender stuff in WWE programming. But also, 
you still want to show that he's a she's a credible threat and that's essentially what they did they look legit they look scary and they got the presence going i was kind of worried that maybe they would come off a little too much like jobbers that's not the case I also want to point out that I watched Joe Gacy's career prior to going to WWE. And when I saw Joe Gacy prior to WWE and I seen all the stuff that he did with the death matches and all the hardcore stuff, it was great, man. He was a great talent. And then I saw him go into WWE and then they put him with Parker, Parker Boudreaux. And that was kind of weird, but I like Joe Gacy. And I thought they had a pretty good idea of what to do with him. The dark, sinister character stuff always seemed to match pretty well for him. So it was really cool. Even though things didn't work out with Parker Boudreaux, we saw him do the thing with GYV, the Grizzled Young Vets. And again, you know, for what the character was and what the gimmick was, I thought all three of them did a great job. But it didn't seem like they were finding their footing within that character. So I was always curious. I'm like, man, what are they going to do with Joe Gacy? And my biggest fear was that they were always going to try to make Joe Gacy the next Bray Wyatt. So when I see him get unmasked tonight and I see him part of the Wyatt Six and I see what he's doing, I love the fact that they're not trying to make him the next Bray Wyatt. I like the fact that they're trying to make him part of the Bray Wyatt universe. For a guy who I've watched a lot prior to going to WWE and then I saw him in WWE, I felt like this actually came across as a big deal. And you could tell by the fan reactions on social media or even on TV. So that is something to definitely keep in mind. Same thing applies to Dexter Loomis. Dexter Loomis, prior to WWE, I loved his work as Sam Shaw. He came into WWE and he essentially did the same thing. And I always thought that maybe that specific character had a ceiling. But it's interesting because that character also has some similarities to what could be transpired through this gimmick. I like the fact that Dexter Loomis was a guy who wasn't always talking in his segments. I like the fact that Dexter Loomis was always a guy who was just kind of like a crazy psycho. So it's pretty fitting that he's within this group. And I like the fact that he's with this group. And when he came out tonight and he unmasked himself, I felt like this is something that could spin off into some more craziness. And obviously, I loved Eric Rowan as part of the Wyatt family. I loved Eric Rowan when he was with Brody Lee. I thought Eric Rowan was a hell of a talent, man. Maybe didn't always get the credit that he deserved, but tonight these guys all had a certain aura that I think people should take seriously. So if you like the Y6, let me know. If you don't like the Y6, tell me why. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching.